Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over TCP socket communication between two different Raspberry Pis. So of course to complete this tutorial you're going to need two different Raspberry Pis that I have here. I have my Play Pi and I have my Grow Pi. And uh, in this series of tutorials on Catch the Cookie Thief we've been working on this guy over here, the Play Pi. Um, but to be able to do transmission between two pies, you need two pies, and so this is the other one that we'll be using called the Grow Pi. Uh, they're both connected through Wi-Fi to my router and thus have the ability to communicate to each other over Ethernet. Now, why do we need two Raspberry Pis? Well, you need what's called a server and what's called a client. It's kind of like uh, you are the client and you access Google. It's, it's kind of like a one-way one -way communication street, so to speak. Um, Google doesn't come to you. Instead, you talk to Google and Google replies to you. You visit the server and the server serves you information. So what we're going to be setting up here is a client that hits up that connects to the server and sends some data back and forth and then disconnects. Our first example will be a trivial example that just does like text back and forth and you can follow along if all you have is a single Pi and your computer. However, if you're going to be wanting to flip LEDs and stuff like that, uh, I don't think you can do that with your computer. So that's where we need a secondary Raspberry Pi, but everything I will be writing will be on the two Pi so that you can follow along. So this screen here is my PlayPi, and on the left I have my GrowPi. You're going to want to open up Idle 3 on both of your Raspberry Pis. You're then, wanna go, you're then going to want to open up a new window, and I'm going to save this to a folder on my desktop called Cookie, and I'm going to call it CookieServer.Pi. So the first thing we're going to want to do is, of course, import a module that allows us to set up socket communication, and that module is called socket. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to specify a host, and we're going to just leave that blank without any contents, and then we're going to specify a port uh, through which the communication will happen. So I'm going to go with 5560 because I can. Uh, don't go for a port that you know, is already assigned to something like port 22, which is assigned for SSH, or port 80, which is like your um, communication for websites. Uh, pick something like a higher level port. It doesn't have to be 5560. It could be whatever you want. Um, but if you go higher level, odds are you're looking at an unassigned port. Um, I'm then going to create some data. Um, if you're going to have a server, you're going to want to serve information. And so I'm going to create a stored value. And this could be like a text file that you have that you call on or whatever. This is trivial. This is just for proof of concept. I'm going to create a stored value. And I'm going to say uh, my stored value is going to be, yo, what's up? The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a function uh, that allows us to set up our server just so that we can call on it because just just work with me here and the, and the way you go about doing that is first you want to set up your server and, or your socket and you, you're gonna say socket s is equal to socket dot socket dot uh, bracket socket dot af underscore inet and this is the type of connection that you want to establish and then you're going to specify um, what kind of connection in terms of like TCP versus UDP. And so you type in socket dot uh, sock underscore stream. So this is the statement that you need to be able to set up your socket. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to write a print statement just to say that yes, the socket has been created, created. And then what we're going to do is we're going to try and bind to our host and port. And uh, this may work or it may not work. And if it doesn't work, we want to know why it doesn't work. And so we're going to want a print statement as to why it doesn't work. So we're going to try it. What we're going to try is binding to our host and our port. Something that important that I left out of here is that your binding, you have to be sending in a tuple. I uh, send in a tuple, not two individual values. So that's a bit of a mistake that I made. And going back, you're going to want to adjust that. 
And if that doesn't work, any exception that we get, specifically a socket error, we're going to want that as we're me as our message. But we're going to want to print that message. Now, assuming this works, we're going to print socket bind complete. And then we know we have successfully gotten past that step. Finally, we're going to put out our S, our socket, so that uh, other functions can access our socket. So we have our socket set up, and now we want to set it up so that it is listening for any sort of connection. And so we're going to set up a new function called setup connection. And in this one, we're going to say, uh, we're going to listen to our socket, and how many people are we gonna listen for? How many people are we gonna allow in? We're going to allow in one person. So allows one connection at a time. Now with the way that I'm gonna be writing this script, you can only allow one person at a time to connect. Uh, you would have to do like some sort of multi-threading where you uh, call on a function will be sending up further multiple times or something like that. And since I only have one Raspberry Pi that would ever be connecting at one time, we're going to be setting this up for one uh, connection. Otherwise you could set it up for two. And so what that allows you to do is kind of like when, when you visit Google and you type in um, uh, cute cat pictures or whatever it is, and I'm on Google at the same time, I don't see you typing in like cute cat pictures. It's like a one-on-one -on -one type of connection. You don't, it's not like you're in a room, a chat room, for example, where you can hear different conversations going in different directions. It's always like an interview. And so um, this is why we specify how many we're going to be uh, setting up and this is where we do it. So then when that's done, we, we, we set up a, a connection and an address and that is by accepting uh, whatever the listening picks up on. Except you're going to want to spell accept correctly, of course. Uh, then as a proof of concept dummy statement, we can say we are connected to, and then we'll say uh, the address. So this would be the IP address followed by, let's convert it to string address. So this is just a statement saying like, yes, we, we have connected. So uh, you know that that's happening. We're then going to return our connection um, value back out because we're gonna be needing that later. Now, before we start actually transferring data back and forth, so what we've done so far is we've set up our socket and we've set it up so that we can actually uh, like bind so that we can actually um, connect to it so that a client can connect, connect to it. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to call on that setup server uh, function and since it returns the value s we're going to say s is equal to setup server and then we're gonna say while true um, we're going to try to get our connection which will be from setup connection we've already set up our server at this point and then we're gonna call on a function we're gonna create called data transfer and we're going to pass into it our connection. If there's any problem with this, we're going to have an exception, and any sort of exception, we're going to just break out of this true loop so we don't crash the program. Instead, we just exit it and then we quit. So now that we know what's going on here, so we set up our connection, and then we're going to have to do some data trans uh, transfer between it. So I'm going to create a new function called data transfer and into it, of course, we need to pass our connection. So this function is uh, a big loop that uh, allows to send and receive data, and this is the meat of what the connection is actually going to involve. So it's a, a big loop that sends, receives data until told not to. Effectively is what we're gonna be setting up here. So we're gonna say while true, <laughs> where you want to first receive the data. So our client has logged in at this point and then presumably our client is gonna send us some sort of data. So we need to receive that data from our client. So we're gonna say client, uh, or sorry, our data 
is going to be from our connection and we're going to receive and then this value here is our buffer size you can change that to however uh, much you want so I'm just doing 1024 for this particular example so receive the data all right now with Python 3 when you receive data like Python 3 uh, a difference between Python 3 and Python 2 is I understand it and I don't really know Python 2 you know I'm, I'm still new to Python is that uh, Python 3 requires you to differentiate between bytes and string data and so what that means in the context of socket communication is that we need to decode any sort of data that we receive and we need to encode any sort of data that we receive so because I'll be working in strings um, I'm going to decode it as UTF-8 now the way I'm going to structure this program and how it works is uh, when you send a message across it's going to uh, like the server could do multiple things you could retrieve stored values such as yo what's up that we specified up here or you could say do some addition where you receive a couple numbers or you could receive a message that says uh, turn on the LED and so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna have like a, a command word whenever you send the string over the, through the socket you have a command word and then it's separated by space and then whatever else is whatever else so I need to take that string and split it such that you get that command word isolated and then you interpret that command word what does that mean and then you uh, perform specific actions based off of that command word so that's that's not the only way to do it, but that's how I'm going to do it. So what I'm going to do is create a new value here called data message. And it's going to be equal to data dot split. As I mentioned, I'm going to split it and we're going to split it by a space one time. And the command in particular that we have is, uh, so this is the command that we need to execute, is the first segment of our data message, the first iteration. So I should uh, comment this so you know what's going on. Split the data such that you separate the command from from the rest of the data. Okay, so now we have our command, and um, what are we going to want to do with this server? Well, I'm going to create another function, because functions are fun. And this function is going to be called get. And what get is going to simply do is retrieve that store value that we specified earlier. So we're going to create our reply, and our reply is going to be equal to our stored value. And then we are going to return our reply. Trivial, it is, really. Um, so let's create another one that's a little bit more fun. Uh, we're going to have another command called repeat and what repeat is going to do is it's going to take what's left over of that data message and you can probably guess by the name of the function your reply is going to be repeating whatever was left over from the rest of that uh, uh, data message that was sent in so that's the second half of it and then you're going to return the reply we have these two functions both pretty trivial get and repeat and we have a command uh, and we have our command isolated so now we need to determine what it is we're going to do based off of that command so if the command is equal to get or sorry I should say get then what we're going to do is we're going to say our reply is equal to get otherwise if the uh, command is equal to repeat, we're going to say our reply is equal to repeat, and we pass in the uh, data message that we have. Now, it's also going to be important if our client chooses to disconnect. Like, let's say uh, our client connects and then uh, breaks using, like, control C or something like that this program is going to crash and so we're going to want to be able to set shut down our 
uh, server, we want to be able to accept the fact that our client wants to leave us. We don't want to crash and burn every time we uh, find that our client is leaving us. I know it's terribly sad from a server's point of view to have your client leave, but you know, it's part of reality. So what we're going to say is if the command is equal to exit, then we will print a statement saying our client has left us sad face and other and then we are going to break so we get out of this while true loop for data transfer which will drop us down into this uh, while true loop where uh, we, we have now left and then it should hopefully allow us to set up a new connection finally if the last command or sorry if uh, the last command that we're going to accept is if our command is equal to kill. This is where we want to shut down our server. So what we're going to say is print our server is shutting down. And then we're going to want to shut down our so server or close it or socket, sorry, I should say. And we're going to close our socket and then we're going to break out of this loop. Finally, we're going to have an else because I know you guys are going to make typos and our reply is going to be unknown command. And that way we just know, make sure that everything is being received correctly. Otherwise, we wouldn't have uh, anything happen if this didn't work, right? Okay, so now we've, we've set up this big if statement where we have uh, the ability to call on two functions, get and repeat. We can also exit or we can kill our server if we wish to. So uh, now what we need to do is send the data or send the reply back to the client. And so the way you do that is with your connection, you're going to send all. And what are you going to send? You're going to have to send a string and you're gonna to have to encode your reply as a string because remember I, I mentioned the decode earlier well you're gonna to have to encode it now and then just proof of concept data has been sent excellent and then when that's done uh, if we break out of this while true loop we're gonna to want to close our connection with our client finally so this is where we break out and then we could close the connection so uh, that's that this here is hopefully there are no typos in this um, this here is setting up our cookie server and so now what we need to do is give it a save first off and then we're gonna have to develop our client and I'll show you how to do that in the next video